Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Championships, checking team number 1756, Argos, who had a big win at Central Illinois Regional just a few weeks ago. They've had a lot of time to iterate, make some new cool things on the road, which we'll be talking about. But we'll take a look at Argos, what they have to offer. Uh, I love the overall packaging of Argos. They've been building great robots every single year. We're we'll talking about this new cone slammer that they have, uh, some cool stuff's going on with their intake, modifications they've gone through, talk about some of their different aspects of programming that have gone to this robot. Let's learn more about Argos and what they have to bring and charge up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Robox competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Well, again, one of the things uh, we were talking about earlier is your robot does something, I really haven't seen it to me, a robot, something called Bash Guards. Talk to me more about what it is and how you came up with it. Okay, so basically at the start of the season, we knew that this arm was going to be very vital to us being able to play the game very well. And when we were talking about how easy it would be to um, change where, or not change where it is, but um, replace it if it, anything goes wrong, we said, well, why don't we just stop things from going wrong? So we added these to where if there's heavy defense and defense in general, uh, these come out and then it comes out with the intake to where when the intake comes out, these bash guards help uh, reflect anything that comes side. So any damage that would have been come from side, the bash guards just takes all the blunt force of it. And then we suck it all up and it never gets in the way. It's just there for straight protection of what we can do with it. How did, how like how and when did you come up with that? Was that a mid-season thing or early season? I just want to say, by the way, that is like one of the coolest like ASMR robot sounds I've ever heard <laughs> on a robot before. Thank you. Um, so actually, at the start of the season, we only pick up cones from the side position, and we, those were going to come out to basically help us tip it over. But with us figuring out that we can tip it over with this backplate of the intake right there, uh, we didn't need this a uh, front portion right here, so sure. we basically just took it off and it still came with the idea that this side part would be protected. And that side part really just came from, we didn't want to have to replace the arm and not have that issue, uh, that big of an issue if in between matches we have to fix something or, oh. Uh, Let's talk about a couple more things uh, on your end too. I know a little bit on Swerve you wanted to cover and uh, some uh, modifications for that. Uh, and then also uh, anything as we start to go up in the arm, talking about the intake too. Mm -hmm. So Swerve's was really just something because we only, we played week two and week three, and we didn't really have much time to iterate in between. Sure. So in week two and week three, we had drivetrain, and we knew we kind of wanted to speed it up because we were pretty slow. Um, so we actually gear ratioed it up to be close to an L3, or L4, L3, and made it to where it's a lot faster and a lot easier to maneuver around the field without getting caught in too many pinches. As we talk about, as we get into more of the uh, scoring structure area of your robot here, talking about your intake, uh, I love uh, that you, even with this type of arm, you still went to a pretty wide intake overall. I see a lot of teams are going much skinnier this year. Uh, I like your robot width, but talking about the composition of it and how it's been working out for your team. Um, so, well, actually, when we were coming up with it, we kind of took inspiration from the EveryBot with the two close roller type of idea with wheels. So that picks up the uh, lip of the cone, though, and not the top. So when it's on the side, it grabs the lip right here. And when the lip squeezes in between here, it basically just rolls together. And as it rolls together, it squeezes the lip, and we can hold it pretty well. And since we thought that since we can pick it up on the side from two different directions, both these ways, um, we made a we made a wrist a wrist function that so if it's like that we have to flip uh, we have to flip the wrist to where we can actually place it on the node and with that then we can pick it up from both directions and have it not be a problem at all. Oh, I didn't even notice uh, on your wrist how you're doing that flip too. That's really uh, really nice and really smooth, honestly, as you've gone through. 
That's great. Yep. Um, as we talk uh, about your arm a little bit more as well too, Brady, talk to me about uh, one of the things that I really like is how quick your arm is. You'll be able to just get cycle times so quick. So talking about your arm speed and what's that mean to Argo so far? Yeah, so originally our arm was significantly slower and like less optimized for getting to the uh, scoring nodes. So after uh, uh, the week two and three competitions, we uh, sped up not only like going up to the nodes, but also rotating on the way instead of when we uh, get there so that it reduces cycle times. So low, uh, we have, you know, obviously cube and cone, so uh, we can also uh, rotate, which we wouldn't have to do here, but uh, um, then this is medium for cone and then high for cone. Yeah, just watching the speed on that is so yeah. cool on your robot here. And like you said, cycle times have been a big thing with Argos on here so far. Let's talk about the Cone Slammer uh, that you've added onto your robot here. Uh, love just to hear about uh, how it's been working out for you. You've played a couple matches here at Championships as we're filming this. Uh, and just overall, give me a breakdown of it. So after our week three competition, we decided that we needed to get away from a two-piece auto and try and figure out a three-piece auto. And we were kind of at practice one day, and, and we just – we just started like messing around with how to put a cone onto the nodes. So we just we eventually came up with like a motion where you would like like slam it down like this, and we started prototyping with wood and all kinds of things, and came up with this, which as you can see, there's kind of a like scuffing here. Which what it does is when it slams onto the node, it is it is pushing the cone out and then onto it. So. I love all the 3D printing from the carbon fiber 3D print here to all the way yeah. to the rest of this too. It's really slick. Along with uh, carbon fiber here too. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as we start to uh, continue to move on in this robot, we got to hear a little bit of the code side as well too. What's that's had to bring? Uh, James is going to be talking about uh, your uh, operator console as well too, which I hear is called Tiny Box Tim. I'll have to hear a little bit more of a story about that, uh, and then how your assisted alignment works on field as well too. Yeah, of course. So. Um, the assisted alignment is actually a kind of two-part system. You had mentioned the wide intake, and one of the cooler parts of the robot is we're actually using some time-of-flight distance sensors from playing with Fusion that are located here, here, and back here on the robot. And what that allows us to do is when we're using the camera, which is mounted low for good distance resolution, we are aligning with the pole, and then we're using a proportional uh, control, a proportional controller to align us to the cone, and then it looks at the intake and how far the game piece is in the intake and actually sure. offsets us. Because one of the problems we had with a wide intake is it's wider than the cone can be off of a peg if it's in the intake somewhere. So our vision alignment system is actually compensating for where the game piece is in the intake. Oh, that's really interesting on there. And, and yeah, you're so right on that. There, that is kind of a drawback with that. But it's cool to hear how you compensated for that as well, too, which I think is really cool. Uh, talking about uh, your control box here and what you're doing and maybe some of the uh, story behind the naming of it, too. Sure. So uh, the naming was kind of grandfathered in. It's Tiny Box Tim V2. This was a control box for a robot in the past that was repurposed this year and reused. Uh, Tiny Box Tim control is, is a Tiny Box Tim is a really great way of interfacing with the robot and giving us a method for the operator to tell the lifter subsystem what positions that it goes to. The lifter subsystem has the ability to take in an XY position relative to the robot and just go there with various methods of component uh, movement. You had mentioned the wrist. That's actually something we added since our last competition oh, in the sure. control system. We changed it so that as we're moving up, the wrist will also, in certain cases, flip simultaneously, which reduced our scoring time by about a second, actually. And Tiny Box Tim has the six rows of buttons, three of which are currently in use. These indicate the different um, columns. And then the switches here are different settings on the robot, cone mode and cube mode. and if the robot's enabled, you can actually observe that the LEDs on the robot mounted at the top of the A-frame will change based on what mode you're in, yellow for cones, purple for cubes. The bash disable and bash auto is how we control our bash guards and when we want them to come out because when we're scoring, we don't want the bash guards to go out because they would bump into the wall. Um, and then the other switch is our intake flip and this are the two positions that the intake could be possibly be in when scoring with the wheels up or the wheels down. 
and then we have our special fire switch, which is one okay. of our favorite. And if we turn that on, and the robot will use the candles fire animation. So it's like the victory spins of Argos, you said, <laughs> yeah. right? Yes. So. Yes. Very cool. Well, Argos, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about your machine and robot. Absolutely phenomenal robots every single year. So make sure you check out 1756. Of course, best of luck to you here at the championship as well. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsored camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.